Alright guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, welcome back to the Intro to Python tutorial series. What we're going to do today is we're going to talk about input and output statements, or input and output functions, as they're called in Python. Now we've already seen an input function. This is one of them. Um, today we're going to look at how we can also enter data into programs to make it more interactive. Let me start by showing you an example. We're just going to get the name of a user. We're going to say name equals input. Uh, what is your name? Um, and then we're going to print out name. So the idea is we're going to use this to ask, so to first print out a question to show the user, get their answer, and then print out their answer in the form of the variable name. So let's go ahead and run this so it makes more sense. So we have, what is your name? I'm going to type in a myth and then hit enter. And then I'm going to get this line of code. So basically what happened is input printed out what is your name. I typed in a myth, and then this a myth got stored in the variable name. And so when I printed out name, I got whatever I typed in. Similarly, let's run it again. If I, if I typed in John, then we're just going to print John. So let's do something a little bit different. So basically what happens is when you enter, um, so input basically takes whatever you type in and turns it into a string. So when you just have input, the data type that name is going to be is always going to be string, or whatever is on this side is always going to be a string. Um, however, we don't always want to use strings. So let's look at an example where we're using integers. So let's say we've got price equals um, input enter the price of apples. I'm actually going to do this incorrectly just to show you what happens. So we'll say um, uh, input, enter the price of apples. Um, we'll print out another message to the user saying you get a 10% discount. So basically um, we're going to display the discounted price. We'll say discounted price equals 0.9 times price. And then we'll print out the discounted price. So let's go ahead and run that and see what happens. So we'll enter the price of apples is, let's say $5 an apple, okay? So we get an error because this is still a string. Remember, input stores a string, whatever we type in right here, input stores that as a string in this variable right here. So we need to use casting from our previous tutorial on data types. What we're going to do is um, we want, generally the price is probably going to be a float. It's probably going to be like a decimal, like 299 or 199. So we're going to say float to convert it into a float. Um, and then now let's go ahead and run it. So we'll enter the price of apples. We'll say five. And now we've got 4.5 for our discount. Now, Let's move on to um, another example. Well, actually, well, before, okay, that should be pretty clear. I was going to show you the type, but it should be pretty obvious what the type is now. Um, let's actually do an exercise now. So those are actually the basic concepts of input and output. Um, what I want to do now is I want to actually display that discounted price in a nicer way. So right here we had you get a 10% discount. Um, but just actually to show you another example, let's say we wanted to say the discounted prices, discounted price, have a nice day. What we can do is we can do print uh, the discounted prices. We'll have some semicolons, and then we're going to put a comma. A comma is an equivalent to a space within this print right here. We will have discounted price, our variable. And then we're going to have another message. Have a nice day. So let's go ahead and print this out. So enter the price of apples, five. You get a four, you get a 10% discount. Um, you have 4.5. And here we have a message. The discounted price is 4.5. Have a nice day. Maybe we don't need this actually. Let's get rid of that. Um, have a nice day is kind of, well, we should probably have a period after this. So 
Let's go ahead and let's actually just do that. Let's put a period right here. Eh, that's kind of weird, isn't it? Hmm. Well, I guess we can still give that a try. Put a period and then another comma. Every time we have something new, um, we'll have a comma. Remember, these commas count as spaces. So we had the discounted price is followed by um, a space right here. And then we had discounted price and then another space right here and then have a nice day. So let's just give this a try. So a 5, 4.5. Discounted price is 4.5, um, period, have a nice day. Um, there is a way to get rid of this. We'll get more into string operations later on, and then we'll learn about how to make this a bit cleaner. Anyways, not to jump around, but now let's get to our exercise. So exercise one. Um, so we want to do a few things. We want to get a user's age or a user's name. Uh, we want to get a user's age. Um, and we want to print a sentence that includes the name of the user and their age. So this isn't just going to be printing out a name and printing out their age, we're printing a whole sentence. We're going to have to use those commas that we used before. So first of all, we can say uh, name equals input, enter your name. And it's important we have a space right here because it's not like in our print statement. Next, we're going to say age equals input, enter your age. Now, we're not going to do any casting here because we're not going to do any mathematical operations on this age. So it's OK if it stays a string. Um, now we'll print out a sentence. We'll say, hello, name, followed by a period. Uh, you are age, and then say another period. So let's go ahead and run this. So enter your name, Amit, age 29. Hello, Amit, you are 29. So again, we'll figure out how to get rid of these in the future, but for now, this is good. Hmm, well. Just for a little experiment right here. Let's just try this one. Mm -hmm. Get rid of this comma. All right. And we need a plus sign right there. Cool. OK. So there we actually used a plus sign, which is a way to join strings together in order to make this work. Again, we'll have a whole unit on string operations and we'll get into that later. Now let's look at our second exercise. Uh, exercise two. So get the price of a liter of milk in the use in the given the user city. Um, pretty much we just want to ask them what the price of a liter of milk is. Uh, have the user enter the amount of discount they want. Um, calculate the discounted price. Now this is going to involve us to do. This is going to ask us, or this is going to force us to do a little bit of math um, and some casting. So first we're going to say uh, milk price. We'll create a variable called milk price, and then we'll say input enter the price of a liter of milk. Let's kind of move this to the side a bit, just so we have some space to work. Um, now, we are entering a price, so this is going to be a float. We're going to cast this using float. Um, now, next what we want to do is we're going to ask them what kind of discount they want. Um, and we're going to ask for that in decimal. So enter the decimal for the discount you want. So we're not going to, we should specify it, but really what we want is if the user enters 0.5, that means they want a 50% discount. So we'll get that. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to basically um, 
get the discounted price um, by multiplying 1 minus the discount and then multiplying that by the milk price. Now, basically, the reason we're doing this is, let's say someone wants 0.3 for their discount. They want a 30% discount. That means that they're going to pay 70% of the price. So we would do 1 minus 0.3 to get 0.7 and multiply that by the price of milk. Um, now, I know this, this may be new to you, this sort of construction, um, this math we're doing, but our next tutorial on arithmetic operators will make it more clear. So let's go ahead and print out the discounted price. Uh, we'll just enter in 32, 23, we'll say 0.3, and this is our discounted price. This is 70% off, or sorry, this is 30% off, 70% of the original price. Anyways, um, the key takeaways from that are how to use input, the fact that you need to use casting, and um, also just kind of how to display text in a neat way um, in our print statements. Um, again, I know I mentioned this a bunch of times, but don't worry too much about the plus sign, about how to um, use and how to join things with, and how to join strings. We'll get more into that into a tutorial here real soon. Anyways, I hope this was of value to you. If you enjoyed this and want to see more of these tutorials, uh, please make sure to like and subscribe. Um, stay tuned for the next tutorial on arithmetic operators and have a nice day.